I picked a five minute file of the comet and dragged it into Affinity Photo. I just have version one because I have pre bought that for a very good price and I haven't yet decided to upgrade to version two. But um, I think for what we want to do with astro photography editing, version one is probably good enough, although I might upgrade at some point. But anyway, as you see, when you drag in the TIFF file, you don't really see much of anything because the Vespera gives you an unstretched TIFF file. So most of the data is kind of down in the dark, and uh, you're going to have to do some work to bring it out. And you have two choices here. One is you can get into levels and um, do some adjustments here by adjusting the gamma and the black level. So that's one option. Another option is to get it up into this uh, persona, tone mapping persona. So I'm going to do it this way for this example. So I'm just going to click here and it will automatically analyze the data and come up with uh, what the program thinks the uh, the tone mapping should be. And this takes um, maybe 15 seconds or so of processing, and then it will come up with the image. And we'll see that shortly. Here it is, and it's way overexposed. So what I like to do is to scroll down and actually move the exposure down and also move this tone compression down so you can just start to see the uh, the core but it's not like overblown so maybe about there and so this is kind of my starting point for my subsequent processing and here you can see the core you can see the dust tail of the comet and also the ion tail coming up here which was very prominent back on january 21st so then i'm going to click apply up here and that will apply those changes to the image and then it will put you back in regular editing mode so you can do your further adjustments so now at this point already i have a already stretched image if i click levels and click default i could you can see there's a little bit of opportunity to play around the black level and maybe play some more with the gamma although i'm not going to do that here i'm going to instead just go directly down to curves and do my work here although you could play around the levels some but with curves you can get a more dramatic contrast differences. I like to open up curves and click on this picker button and now you can click inside the photograph and while you left press the mouse you can drag down or up and that will move a particular location on the histogram up or down. So what I like to do is to pick a part of the image like maybe in this ion tail just kind of right in here and just move it up a smidge so that will make that part brighter and then take something else that's dark in the image where i want to make it darker and i'm going to pick somewhere else and drag it down so you can see if you do this it's increasing the contrast and I, if you increase it too much it'll blow out the, the core so i'm going to actually pick this the second dot on the right and lower it just a little bit and then lower click on this dot on the left and lower it down a little bit just kind of play around with this and you can immediately see on the screen the effect of making these adjustments and also something you would notice that um, the image becomes more grainy so as you do these adjustments um, you're introducing noise but you're bringing out the stuff. So you can do this in small bite size adjustments. So I'm going to do this S curve here and click merge. And then you can come in here and do it again. So I'm going to do a second time. I'm going to click this little button for the curves. I'm going to click picker and do the same thing. I'm going to click on this ion tail 
and just move it up a smidge. They're going to click somewhere else in the screen where it's dark, no stars, and move it down some more. So this will be making the, the background darker and that ion tail. I can click that second little button or second little dot on the histogram, move it up a little bit. So here I'm making that ion tail more pronounced and the background darker. Now you don't want to overdo this and make the background like totally black. I, I never try to make a background totally black. I never try to make this like, like flat line. I always want to kind of keep the curve going a little bit. And so here, I'm going to leave it here. So here, there's still some, you can see the anti-tail, the comet here. You can see the ion tails looking fairly good. The core is not blown out. And I'm going to click Merge. So I'm pretty happy with just that. But it's pretty grainy. And this is where purchasing some anti-noise program will come in beneficial. And I purchased the Topaz anti-noise plugin and integrated that into Affinity Photo. So I can go into filters, plugins, and um, Topaz Lab. I also purchased an RC Astro Star Exterminator and they also have their own anti-noise plug-in. I have not purchased that, but I might someday. But uh, Topaz Labs is just another one. It's a, uh, one of these fancy anti-noise plug-ins. So I'm going to click on this. And what happens here is that it takes a few seconds. This is, you have to have the plug-in already integrated, but it, um, it's opening up in a different screen. I'm going to move it over so you can see it in just a moment. My uh, computer has multiple monitors. But anyway, this shows the um, on the left is what the original file looked like with all the noise. And then on the right is after the Topaz anti-noise did its magic. So it basically took all this noise, all these little tiny dots you see on the left, and it kind of uh, blurred them together and it did a little bit of contrast adjustment. And you can play around with all of these buttons up here and try different settings and see what looks good for you. And I'm going to keep it just right where I have it, where I chose the clear and the remove noise high and enhance sharpness high. And you can play around with other stuff, like you can click low and, and see what looks better to you. You know, so you can, each image is going to have there may be a kind of magic thing that you can play around with. So once you're happy with this, you just click apply. And what this will do, the plugin will make the changes. It'll communicate that information back to Affinity Photo and then adjust the Affinity Photo or replace the Affinity Photo to file with the new one. So now we have the consequence of doing that anti-noise. So we now no longer have the gradiness. So now we see the, the core still. It's not blown out. You see the dust tail of the comet, and you see the ion tail that is sometimes hard to get. And in the bottom right, there's also a little bit of an anti-tail. And so we kind of have all the features of the comet that are somewhat sought after. And so now I'm going to call this dud. So I'm going to click on File, Save As, and this will save a proprietary Affinity Photo version of the file. And I was going to save that so we can come back to this later on if we want to further edit it. But for sharing the photo with other people, you typically want a JPEG. So then I would go in the File, Export, and that brings up the, J the Export File Selection. So I'm going to choose JPEG, and then you can for the uh, you can choose best quality, high quality, medium, for whatever kind of file size you want. And this, I'm going to choose high quality because that does some compression, so it reduces the file size some, but it doesn't deteriorate the image too much. 
and you can see here the estimated file size is 158 kilobytes. So that's a reasonable size. For example, you could share it on cloudy nights in the forums without them down sampling it. And I'm going to click export. And then always note where it's going to put it so you know your you know what directory is going into. Sometimes it remembers the last used directory and it may put it someplace you don't know about. And save it. And so that's all. So now you can um, exit out of this. And then inside that directory, you could then go and look at the file to make sure you're happy with it. Here it is. So here's the JPEG I just got. So this is what would be appropriate to share share with people. And the background is not totally black, but I like this because if you made it totally black, it would reduce some of the uh, some of the subtleties here. So I like to keep the background not quite totally black, but close to black, but not quite. And so here you have a nice ion tail, dust tail, and anti tail in the core. And the core is because this was only a five minute exposure, it's not all elongated. Some people post images where they take an hour or two hours and you get this big, long um, thing stretching across the screen. And, and some people think, well, that looks like a comet, but that's just the core just being, uh, you know, moving across the sky for uh, two hours. And if you want to accurately capture what the comet actually looks like, then you have to either do a short exposure like this and do the best you can to push processing, or you could turn on the TIFFs and grab all those TIFF files, which are individually short exposure, unstacked, and then run them into some third party stacking program that can stack on the comet and not the stars. And that gets kind of complicated, but uh, so this is a more simple process of just choosing a, making a short exposure, and then doing the best you can with the already stacked tip file from the Vespera.